Hi, I am Madhu Vasudevan from the AWS by Doing team. Welcome to this educational video series, AWS by Doing, wherein you can learn AWS cloud computing by following along with an AWS certified solutions architect. We acknowledge and thank the official AWS documentation material which we have used to produce this educational video. Although we will try to keep all resources consumed eligible for the free tier, ensuring that you are not charged or minimizing your charges is your responsibility. To minimize charges, remember to delete all created chargeable resources after each session. This time, we will walk you through a hands-on lab on Create an RDS MySQL DB instance, Install MySQL Workbench, Connect to your MySQL database, and Delete the RDS MySQL DB instance. The estimated cost for doing this hands-on is no charge as RDS MySQL DB instance is free tier eligible and prerequisite AWS skill level required is that of a beginner with general understanding of AWS RDS MySQL concepts. To set up a free tier eligible AWS account and a user with sufficient permissions, check out our video on Create Admin User. To begin, fire up a browser, preferably Google Chrome, and head to aws.amazon.com. Sign in to the AWS Management Console as a user with administrator credentials. In this step, we will use Amazon RDS to create a MySQL DB instance with db.t2.micro db instance class, 20 GB of storage and automated backups enabled with a retention period of one day, all of which is free tier eligible. Open the Amazon RDS console. In the top right corner of the Amazon RDS console, select the region in which you want to create the DB instance. Usually you might just choose the region closest to you. AWS cloud resources are housed in highly available data center facilities in different areas of the world. Each region contains multiple distinct locations called availability zones. You have the ability to choose which region to host your Amazon RDS activity in. Go ahead and click on Create Database. Let's switch to your original interface. You now have options to select your engine. For this walkthrough, Click the MySQL icon and choose only enable options eligible for RDS free usage tier. And then click next. In the specified DB details page under instance specifications for license model Select the default general public license to use the general license agreement for MySQL. MySQL only has one license model. For DB engine version, select the default version of MySQL. Note that Amazon RDS supports multiple versions of MySQL in some regions. Move on to the DB instance class. To stay within the free tier, select db.t2.micro, one virtual CPU, one GB RAM, which equates to one GB memory and one virtual CPU. 
multi-AZ deployment is not free tier eligible, you will have to pay for the multi-AZ deployment. Using a multi-AZ deployment will automatically provision and maintain a synchronous standby replica in a different availability zone. The storage type for the free tier eligible instance is just general purpose SSD. Select the default of 20 to allocate 20 GB of storage for your database. You can scale up to a maximum of 16 terabyte with Amazon RDS for MySQL. If your workload is cyclical or unpredictable, you would enable storage auto scaling to enable RDS to automatically scale up your storage when needed. We won't be needing that for this demo. Under settings, for DB instance identifier, type a name for the DB instance that is unique for your account in the region that you selected. For this demo, we'll just name it RDS MySQL RDS MySQL demo. For master username, Type a username that you will use to log in to your DB instance. Copy that out. And for password, type a password that contains 8 to 41 printable ASCII characters. We'll just go with master user for this demo. Confirm the password and click Next. You are now on the Configure Advanced Settings page where you can provide additional information that RDS needs to launch your MySQL DB instance. Under Network and Security, for Virtual Private Cloud, select Default VPC. For Subnet Group, Choose the default subnet group. For public accessibility, choose yes. This will allocate an IP address for your database instance so that you can directly connect to the database from your own device. For availability zone, leave it as no preference. For VPC security groups, select Create New VPC Security Group. This will create a security group that will allow connection from the IP address of the device that you are currently using to the database created. Under Database Options, for Database Name, key in a database name that is uh, up to 64 alphanumeric characters, like my master db leave the default port value of 3306 leave the default value for db parameter group also leave the default value amazon rds uses option groups to enable and configure additional features enabling IAM DB authentication allows you to manage your database credentials using AWS IAM users and groups. We'll just leave it as disabled. And encryption is not available for the free tier. Select disable enhanced monitoring to stay within the free tier. Enabling enhanced monitoring will give you metrics in real time for the OS for the operating system that your DB instance runs on. Under Maintenance, select Enable Auto Minor Version Upgrade to receive automatic updates when they become available. Clear Enable Deletion Protection for this walkthrough. When this option is enabled, you can't delete the database and click on Create Database. Your DB instance is now 
getting created. Click view your DB instance. Depending on the DB instance class and storage allocated, it could take several minutes for the new DB instance to become available. The new DB instance appears in the list of DB instances on the RDS console. The DB instance will have a status of creating until the DB instance is created and ready for use. When the status changes to available, you can connect to a database on the DB instance. It's now being backed up. Let us move on to the next step while we wait for the DB instance to become available. A SQL client like MySQL Workbench can be installed using the Windows MSI installer package. Installing MySQL Workbench Using a Windows MSI installer package requires either administrator or power user privilege and a loan download is available at this uh, URL. Go ahead and click on download. You will be prompted to log in, sign up or begin your download. You can click no thanks, just start my download for a quick download. To install MySQL Workbench, from an account with administrator or power user privileges, just double click the file. Take the default options. In the setup type window, you may choose a complete or custom installation. To use all features of MySQL Workbench, choose the complete option. Having installed the MySQL Workbench, launch the MySQL Workbench application and go to Database, Connect to a Database so that we can connect to the MySQL Database. To clean up, you can delete the MySQL DB instance from the Amazon RDS console. It is a best practice to delete instances that you are no longer using so that you don't keep getting charged for them. From the Amazon RDS console, click on Databases, select your database. From the drop-down of Actions, click on Delete. You are asked to create a final snapshot and to confirm the deletion. For our example, do not create a final snapshot. Acknowledge that you want to delete the instance and then click Delete. Your database is now being deleted and we have cleaned up. You have created, connected to and then finally deleted a MySQL database instance with Amazon RDS. Amazon RDS makes it easy to set up, operate and scale a relational database in the cloud. It provides cost efficient and resizable capacity while managing time consuming database administration tasks, freeing you up to focus on your applications and business. Thanks for watching. Please give a thumbs up to this video to encourage us. Share this video with your friends and colleagues. Also, subscribe to this channel AWS by doing and we will update you regularly with our latest and greatest offerings. Write in a comment of what you liked and how we can improve. Happy Cloud Computing! 
and we will see you again in the next episode of AWS by doing.